Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today I am doing my buys and buys for January 2024. So this is the video where I go over my empties and my haul for the month. I go over my beauty budget. I let you guys know how I'm doing with my numbers. I'll probably end up showing a little bit of my spreadsheets only because since this is my first update for the year, I want to retouch on what my budget is. I did a budgeting video last year and I'll make sure to link that up in the eye, but I just wanted to refresh in case for all the new people that have found my channel and are just tuning in to this series, I wanna let you guys know how I am doing my beauty budget. So actually let me touch on that very, very quickly and then we'll get into my products. So I am doing a beauty budget. I know a lot of people will do like one product in and one product out like a replacement, but for me that did not work because if I use up a $6 primer but I bring in a $100 eyeshadow palette, that did not sit well with me and my finances. I also do a lot of conscious consumerism and just kind of like mindset videos on this channel to help us with spending and just being mindful of our finances. And so definitely a one in one out does not work for me because I do want to be mindful of my money that is being spent. So this year I did break it down where I am taking $75 per paycheck. I get paid every two weeks, so I have 26 paychecks for the year. That $75 automatically gets transferred into a savings account, and that is my beauty bank. So anytime that I make purchases, I have to pay myself back out of that bank. And one of my rules is to try to not go into the quote unquote negative, this month might be my only month, and you guys will see why very, very shortly. I did go a teeny tiny bit in the negative, but again, I'm filming this in February, so I've already quote unquote paid myself back for those items. The other way that I am breaking down this beauty budget is I do have a certain amount in each category. So I did set aside $1,000 for beauty items, $550 for skincare and that number came from what I ended up spending in skincare last year. I am 39 years old. I'll be 40 this year. I am acne prone. I actually have a couple of my spots uh, showing through right now. I do have hormonal acne that unfortunately I refuse to go on any sort of hormonal medication to treat and that is my own choice, but I want to try to have really good skincare, so I do have quite a big budget for that. And then I do have $400 for the year set aside for eyeshadow palettes. And in hindsight, $400 is not a whole, whole lot, but if you guys want to see me ranking the palettes that I tried last year, I did post that on the 10th of this month. And again, I will link that up in the eye for you guys. But I think last year overall, I spent 400 and something dollars on eyeshadow palettes. So this number is just something that I want to be mindful of. But if I do go over that amount in eyeshadow, palettes it does have to come out of my beauty bank so definitely that is something that I want to be mindful of when I'm bringing more eyeshadows into my collection and also the fact that I probably don't need to bring in a whole lot more palettes into my collection I do have a palette collection video coming and I do also have a vanity tour coming as well so be on the lookout for those so that's just a rundown of how I am doing my beauty budget this year, how I have broken it down, and the amount of money that I am using total. So what would that be? So for the entire year, I have $1,950 to play with. And so let's go ahead and get into my items. I do like to do my empties first and then my purchases. So let me get my bucket of trash. So this is my trash can that I use. It is a popcorn bucket from a certain movie that was garbage. So definitely we are looking in here for our trash. And let me pull out my items and kind of organize them and then we'll go through them in their categories. Let me go ahead and go through my skincare items first. And so I did go through a 
pack. This is a 40 pack of the Shiseido facial cottons. I do love these. I actually try to pick these up at like a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls whenever I see them. I'm going through a big pack right now so I don't need any but my local Marshalls does have these kind of quote unquote in stock so definitely I'll pick up another one whenever I get through with my big pack. This was on clearance for three dollars so I am very happy with the price that I purchased these for and I guess I should preface also the way that I do my monetary numbers is if I know that I purchased it for three dollars and that I can probably get it for less then I will say that this is an empty worth three dollars. Now if it's an item that I received in like a FabFitFun then I do retail value because that is replacement value so if I wanted to repurchase that item but typically when I am doing my numbers, it is either the amount that I purchased it for or it is a replacement value item if it's a subscription box type of item. And the only subscription box that I get is FabFitFun, which I think the spring one is getting delivered later on in February. So that unboxing will be coming up as well. But I love the Shiseido facial cottons. I sometimes do get some irritation around my eyes. I just recently last year found out that there's some red pigments in eyeshadows that irritate my eyes. So when my eyes are extremely irritated, I like using the Shiseido facial cottons. Otherwise, I do use washable kind of like bamboo cotton rounds that I just throw in the washing machine and reuse but definitely when my when my skin and my eyes are a little bit more inflamed those facial cottons are so soft and so wonderful so that is my first empty there Ooh, I can go into this one this is a mini of an Innisfree this is the green tea seed hyaluronic acid cream it's just a moisturizer I got this in a kit last November and so definitely I am pretty much set for my moisturizers but I wanted to work through my minis at the beginning of the year and just kind of get all those little pots out of my skincare fridge so this is a empty this is not a product that I necessarily feel that I need to buy full price but when it does come in a kit I do enjoy using it, it is extremely hydrating which I have oily skin but I also have dehydrated skin so I try to put as much moisture as possible into my skin before I go in with a more matte base Speaking of extremely moisturizing, I did go through a big tube and I had cut it open so it's actually a big tube of the CeraVe healing ointment and I use this for slugging. I use this to mix in with my nighttime moisturizer. This is my like catch-all product that I just will slather on. Um, again, if my eyes were having the irritation, I would basically take this and just slather it all over my eyes. So this is a wonderful product for me to have. I typically either have one of these or some Aquaphor always in my home and in rotation because when your skin needs something just to create a barrier, this is wonderful for that. So I did go through one of these. This is a little bit gross because it was sitting in my shower, but I did go through one of the Equate. This is the Foaming Facial Cleanser. So this is a um, generic Walmart brand, and this is the um, comparable to the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser. So I did go through one of these. This is the facial cleanser that I use at nighttime after my cleansing balm. This is what I go in with to remove everything else. So I, these are not counted in my inventory or in my budget coming in because I think they're like $4. And for me, like I maybe go through one or two of these a year. So for me, I don't count these towards my budget, but I did want to track them to see how many I actually go through. Because in my head, I feel like I go through like two of them a year, but I definitely want to see how many I end up going through. I have two items that are prescription only, but I do want to count these in my empties. I had talked with you guys last year because my dermatologist recommended some like prescription or doctor recommended items and I had talked to you guys about how to treat those in my budget because typically they are a little bit more on the expensive side and you guys were very gracious and said they're prescription, they're by the doctor, do not include them in your inventory, just treat them like regular medical care and that is how I'm treating them. So this one, so I always have trouble pronouncing this word. 
again, more tangents. So I'm dyslexic and there's certain words and sounds that my mouth just doesn't like. So this one, sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong, but you guys have been so kind with never correcting me, so I appreciate it. But this is the alizaic acid, and this is a 15%. Again, this is a prescription only. They can only do 10% over the counter, but this really does help calm down a lot of that hormonal cystic acne and really dry it up so it doesn't turn into like really, really painful, large bumps. So this is wonderful. Um, I already do have a full tube of this ready to go from my dermatologist. So this one, I'm glad to be an empty. It took me forever to get through this and bless our doctor. She's like, oh no, you have 12 refills for the year. So you could go through a tube of this a month if you wanted. I was like, it took me two years to go through this. So I'm good, but thank you for the available refills. So this one is an empty. This next one is a just a little trial size, but again, this is a prescription, and I'll actually go further into this in my buys because I want to talk about this. So this is a trial size of the prescription Eucrisa, and this is a ointment for eczema. My doctor had given me a trial size because he said that um, sometimes this can extremely burn on people's skin, so he wanted me to try this out to see if my skin would react to it. And actually, this was prescribed by my allergy doctor. Um, I'm allergic to everything. I should probably live in a bubble. I am allergic to my dogs, but I love them, so I take two medications every single day. Um, I'm allergic to bees and wasps and all that stuff, so I carry an EpiPen. I did the shots for years, so I, my husband jokes that I should live in a bubble. So. I was talking to my allergy doctor about my KP of all things. Um, I had brought it up with my dermatologist and she had kind of said, you know, keep doing your chemical exfoliants, keep moisturizing, you know, but without doing something internal, like a medicine, you know, she said it's going to be what it is. That's how KP is. So when I talked to my allergy doctor, he said, you know, because I also suffer from eczema, he recommended trying an eczema cream on my arms. So when I talk about my buys, because I'll just spoil the big tube, I'll go a little bit more into it, but definitely this was something that I was happy that I brought up with my doctor. It was just something that I wanted to kind of like run by him if he had any other recommendations. So I did go through the little tube of it, but I'll talk a little bit more about it and what I think about results when I talk about my big tube. Let's look at my makeup empties. So I did set this aside because I wanted to talk about it, but again, this has no value <laughs> towards my empties, but this is a mini size of the, what is this? The Tower 28? No, 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 this is Kosas. This is the Kosas Concealer, and this is in Porcelain Cool, which this does not look cool at all. This has a very yellow undertone, which I think Kosas items lean very yellow. Um, so if you have a cool undertone and you have this concealer, what color did you get? Because like I said, everything leans a little bit yellow, but I love this and it's frustrating. And I had posted a comment on It's Just Steph and I had talked about how, or she was saying that the actual like component of this, the lid ends up cracking because it's just a plastic like hard plastic lid and whenever you tighten it it's going to crack it's a $30 concealer and I was like oh my god I just tried a sample of it I love it it looks beautiful on my under eyes but I don't know if I can spend $30 on a concealer that the component will break every single time so and she said yeah it really sucks like she'll still repurchase it but she's really upset by the packaging so hopefully Kosas will do something about their packaging and just put a regular lid on it It'd be so much better just keep the product just put another lid on it so it stops cracking but I used this up it was beautiful and it's I added it to my loves list but I don't know if that's something that I will spend $30 on unless they change the packaging this one is an exciting one and it's, it's a Franken product so it was in my number seven compact but my last Franken bronzer is gone so this had an e.l.f. bronzer, a little bit of an hourglass powder, and then like half of an hourglass highlight, like a mini highlight. 
that was all mixed into here and I did end up getting this bronzer used up. So I have a bronzer empty already this year and I am very, very excited to be moving on to my other bronzers. If you guys saw my Project Pan update, which I posted on the 5th, I did start using my Juvia's Place bronzer and I'm excited to start seeing my dip wear down in that and to see how long it'll take me to hit pan. But very excited to have a bronzer empty. Another empty is one of my Nikia Joy powders. This is the Velvet Loose Setting Powder. It is all gone. I always take out the sifter, which actually the sifters on these are very easy to take out and I get all of my product out of there. This is a little bit of a spoiler for my deck of panning because this product was rolled into my deck of panning. So my little lines there, that's where I was and I was able to finish up the rest of this powder. I have repurchased this time and time again. This is my Holy Grail powder. I picked up two during Black Friday last year and so I will continue to love and use this powder. I kind of had a little bit of a surprise empty at the beginning of the year and this is a product that is in my 24 in 2024 and it is my Makeup Geek liner in like the nude shade. So I used this to do in my waterline to kind of brighten up my waterline, which I wonder, okay, it's still there. I'm using a different one right now and I got ready about an hour and a half ago. So I was wondering if my waterline highlight shade was still in there because I have a little bit of a darker look on today. I was trying to get some blues used up in one of my No Pan Left Behind palettes, but this is completely gone. The rest of it kind of snapped off. This had crumbled a whole bunch. I did get this for free whenever I placed a Makeup Geek order two years ago. They threw in some eyeliners for free. It also has like stopped rolling up and down. So the component is just completely gone on this, but the product is done. Like there's nothing left in here. I really did like the tone of this one. It has a little bit more of a like neutral base compared to the one I'm using right now is more of a pinky base. So I would consider going back to a inner rim highlighting shade that was a little bit more this tone, but I have a very large one to go through before I would even consider picking up another one. But I'm glad to get one of my 24 in 2024 products already used up in January. And the last makeup item that I was able to use up is one of the Laneige treatment bombs. I got this in a FabFitFun a couple years ago. When was this one? From 2022. So this was from November of 2022. And so this was basically the lip balm that I kept on my nightstand. Now this I ended up stretching quite a bit because about halfway through I squirted a bunch of Aquaphor into here and mixed it back up. Because again, I just love having Aquaphor on my lips and really getting that hydration locked in. So this took a whole lot longer than what I had anticipated, but I am completely okay with that. It basically meant that I did not have to go out and repurchase another Laneige like sleeping mask until last year when I did pick up another gummy bear one, which that is on my nightstand right now. But definitely happy to get this used up. It was a beautiful kind of like white iridescent kind of shade and so it just added a little bit of sparkle and like again like shininess to the lips it did come with this little thing in the lid which i hardly ever used but definitely i was happy to get this in a fab fit fun and get a lot of use out of that so those were the makeup and skincare empties i do not have any perfume or any hair care empties for this month it is a quite slow month for me for empties but i'm still happy with the progress that i was able to make Overall, I for the total for my empties, it was $102.60. So again, starting out the month or the year a little bit slow, I do have an arbitrary goal to use up more than $2,000 per year. Last year, I used up over $3,000 worth of empties, so definitely that shouldn't be hard to get to, but I have curated my collection so far down that it is taking me longer to use up products just because most of my products are new. I've purchased them within the past year or two, so it is taking me a little bit longer to use up some of my products. So I wonder if I'll be able to get to the $200 or $2,000 rather. I'm wondering if I'm gonna be able to get to that goal this year, but we have $100 on the books 
and I do have two declutters, so let me touch on those real quick, and they are both mascaras. So I had used a mini of the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara last year. I ended up getting it in a, in a Sephora's favorite kit, and I loved it. Like, it didn't smudge, it didn't smear. I'd had bad experiences with this mascara before, but I decided to try it again since it came in that kit, and I loved it. So when there was an option for me to get a full size in a FabFitFun last year, which let me look at my declutter spreadsheet. So this only came into my collection in August of last year. I did open this mascara at the end of November and start using it and I was only able to use it through December and some into January before I was like, this is smudging everywhere. This is starting to flake. I love the wand. Like it is this fluffy, beautiful hourglass shaped wand, but just the formula of this mascara, it is going to smudge all over the place. What I end up having the issue with is I have my mascara, it transfers up onto my brow bone right here, and I end up with just black smudges up there. Not the cutest look. So that one unfortunately is a declutter, but now I have learned my lesson that the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara is not for me, and if it pops up in another subscription box, I definitely will not be picking that one. And the other one I'm kind of disappointed in, this is the Essence Volume Stylist Extreme Lash Extensor Mascara, something along those lines. I actually got all of those words right, but this used to be a holy grail, and I bought this in September of last year, and I opened it at the beginning of December and I was only able to use it through the end of January and it dried out so much that it started flaking everywhere and getting into my eyes. And shame on me, I did try to kind of liven it back up a, a little bit. This is what our wand is looking like. So it's a very nice wand to get in there and kind of wiggle at your base and really get some good lift on, on the lashes. But I put a couple drops of vitamin E oil in here just to kind of revive the formula a little bit. And it just made it even more smudgy. Like it never dried down. It stayed wet all day. So this is something that unfortunately I'm going to have to declutter. I'm very sad that I only got like two months worth of use out of it. But this is a four dollar mascara is what I purchased it for so I'm not that sad but I'm just upset that it dried out that quickly because it wasn't that old in my collection but it dried out so quickly and was so uncomfortable to wear so these two mascaras unfortunately are going to be declutters for January so that brings me into my section where I talk about the items that I did purchase and the items that came into my collection so let me start I'm gonna go from what I purchased at the beginning of the month and go down and so at the very beginning of the month FabFitFun was running one of their flash sales and I just, I click on those and my shopping and mindset and sales video, what is my hair doing? But I just put up a let's talk video about sales and of course I feel like I have the control that I can scroll through the sales without having to add something to my cart all the time. So I typically do scroll through the sales just to see if there's anything on there. But I had mentioned in one of my empty videos that if this sunscreen popped back up, I would buy more. Because I ended up getting this in a FabFitFun last year sometime and I love this sunscreen. Well. This ended up being discontinued from Laneige. I could not find it on the website. I could not find it on Amazon, but this is the Laneige Hydro UV Defense Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50. So it has a really good SPF in it. And when I saw it on the FabFitFun sale, these were going for $5.99 each. So I picked up two. So even though these are now discontinued, I am very happy to have two of them, but unfortunately they both expire at the end of the summer. So I put away the other sunscreen that I was using that is good for another year and I automatically opened this and started working on it. So my goal will be to use both of these up through the summer. I do live in Florida, so I put on sunscreen every single day. So definitely these were a steal for $5.99 each. They're a formula that I know and love and they will definitely get 
good use being SPF 50s and used up before they expire at the end of the summer. The next set of purchases that I made is I made an order from Sephora and I did pick up the Natasha Denona My Mini Dream Glow Blush and I saw this one released and I was like, yep, that's going to be mine. Very, very cute. Very pretty. It's two blushes and a highlighter kind of mixed together in the same pan. So I do kind of just scrub and swirl my brush into all of it and put it on. This is a beautiful color, beautiful shade. I love the My Dream packaging. So definitely this, I was very happy to get this home. In that order also, I did pick up another one of my Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid Serums. I mix this in with my nighttime moisturizer just to again add more moisture back to my skin. And one of the like freebie codes that I was able to add, I did get a mini of the Biosance Squalene Omega Repair Cream. I've used plenty of these little sizes in the past and I really do love this cream. It's nice and rich. I have not opened this, well I've opened it, but I haven't started using this yet. Um, I'm trying to use up another mini moisturizer and then this one is next on the docket. So definitely this was my next purchase from Sephora and a repurchase that I always go through, an item that I know I love. And of course I love Natasha Denona's products and so this was definitely going to be on my wish list. Whether I picked it up in January or whether I picked it up later in the year, this was going to come home with me. My next purchase of the month is I did make a purchase from e.l.f. And if you guys know what e.l.f. did in January, then you can probably guess what is in this purchase. But I'm going to leave you in suspense quite a little bit, and I'm going to go over some other things first. So in that e.l.f. order, I did get three items for free as like gifts with purchase, kind of reading, reaching a threshold and you got free gifts. So the first thing that I did get is the Holy Hydration Daily Cleanser. This does come with a different top, but this is the cap from the ColourPop BFD Cleansing Oil and it fits perfectly on here. So I was able to turn this cleanser into a pump. So definitely I've already started using this one and it's like down to here. So as I almost hit myself in the face with it, but I actually have been really enjoying this. I think that this bottle is a little bit too small for the actual price of it. What's the retail price of this? I know I got it for free. Did I put a retail price? So this is $6 and let me just do a comparison real quick because I'm always curious. So this is $6 for 3.7 fluid ounces and the Equate one from Walmart, this is 12 fluid ounces, so three times as much for like $4. While Elf is affordable, it's not affordable compared to some things, but I was happy to get it for free and to give it a try. Along with that order, some other free stuff was one of the Elf Holy Hydration Face Creams. Now this is empty because I took this product out and I put it in my airless pump that I put my um, moisturizers into so I'm not dipping my fingers into them. So this currently is the moisturizer that I'm using so this will probably be an empty for February. And then another little freebie that came was one of the e.l.f. the Sun Touchable Invisible Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. So this one. This is the dupe for the Super Goop. I'm not gonna open it yet, but this is for not the glow screen, which I probably would have preferred to get the dupe of the glow screen, but this is the dupe of their regular one that is kind of like the clear silicone looking sunscreen. This is going to be the dupe for it. So after I'm done with these two, cause like I said, I really have to focus on these two before they expire. But after those are done, then I will go ahead and I'll be happy to try this out later on in the year. Now this item I did pay for in my order, but this is another one of the e.l.f. Wow Brows. This is in neutral brown. I love the Wow Brow as a tinted brow mascara. I do have a lot of hairs in my brows, but because I dye my hair, my brows are lighter. So I do need something that is a tinted brow mascara to kind of tint the rest of my brow hair so that it matches. So definitely I love the Wow Brows. And how much do these ring in for? 
so five dollars so definitely a great deal you can probably always find these on sale as well but definitely this is a constant repurchase for me and i love having those in my collection so the next part of my elf order and i feel like i gotta put my hair back for this one but um I'm gonna run out of hands. I'm just gonna pick up the rest of them in one hand because I'm running out of hands. Um, Elf did a thing, which means that I did a thing. And I ended up picking up 12. Let me count real quick and I'll tell you how many of these I actually ended up picking up. No, forgive me, I only picked up 11. And that is because I have three full ones in my backup already, plus the one that I'm about to be done with in my project pan. So the 11 plus the three, so I'll have 14. I typically go through about four of these a year. And so I was like, I wanted enough of these for the next three years. If you're just finding my channel, I am not a frivolous spender. I am not somebody to have tremendous amount of backups, but this is my Holy Grail primer and Elf keeps teasing things about it. When they released it back last August, I think I picked up like six of them and I've on already gone through two, three of them, something like that. So when they came back out one more time with them, which who knows what Elf is going to do, I said, screw it. I'm going to get a back stock of three years worth of these. I'm not going to have to buy primer for three years. So this is something I'm calling this an investment into my makeup looking well, because this reacts really well with my skin. So I am not upset. Plus I was able to use like 30% off coupons. Like I did not have to pay full price for these. So definitely, I think I got all of these for $7 each. So definitely I'm happy about that. But I did pick up 11 of these and bless it. I wrote the numbers on the back of all of them. So do I have 19 or do I have 20 something total now? So in my inventory, I have up to number 20. So again, I only have 14 in my collection, but since I have started diligently tracking my inventory, the one that's in my project pan right now, that is number six that I will have used up. And then I have all the way up to 20. So like I said, I have three years of these and I do not feel bad about it. As of a couple days ago, when I looked on Elf's website, it is sold out on Elf, but it was available still at Ulta. So definitely if you guys were thinking about trying this product before it goes away again, maybe check it out on Ulta. But I am not mad and not sad. And when I go over my numbers and you guys see the tiny amount that I went over, I'm okay with that because of this special circumstance. And you guys know if you followed my channel for a little while, this is a special circumstance. This is not typical behavior for my spending and my purchasing and my like inventory. So you guys know that this is a special circumstance and I am never going to fault somebody if you have your own special circumstance with something. I'm okay with this. Hope you guys are okay with this, but you'll be seeing a lot of these empties throughout the next couple years. So just be prepared. All right, a few more purchases and then I'll talk about my prescription cream. These two items, they do not count towards my budget because beauty tools do not count and I'm counting these as tools, but I did pick up two palettes from Give Me Glow. I ended up getting a 12 pan palette and also a 24 pan palette and I'll show you guys what I ended up doing on the inside of these, but this one is so pretty. It's called Mr. Grinch. Love this. This was from their holiday collection, but it's like brown and red and green glitters. And I mean, the glitter doesn't come off like it is on there. These are really nice quality, 
but this is the inside of this one. It is just some singles that I've had laying around. And if these two look familiar, this is from the Alamar Cosmetics palette that we all got in BoxyCharm years and years and years ago. But the rest of these are just depotted. They are ColourPop singles, things like that. So this is just a palette that I have thrown together, but I really do like this color story and it definitely goes with the theming on the outside of the palette. So I've been having fun dipping into some of these singles. And then this one here is the, what is it? Magical Garden print beautiful with the moths and everything. Oh, they just released their Valentine's Day collection, which I don't think I'm going to pick anything up from that, but I'm curious what they're going to come out with for spring. I have a huge itch to depot all of my shadows. And I know like maybe this will pass, but like all of my Viseart palettes, I want to take every shade out, put it in one big palette and just have all of my Viseart shades. Somebody talk me out of that because I will end up like probably not liking it in a year, but I really want to depot all my shadows. So somebody talk me out of it. But this is the Midnight Garden palette and this is what the inside looks like. This was an existing um, color story that I had with singles. There is Sydney Grace, there is Makeup Geek, there's ColourPop in here but I love again the greens and earth tones with the purples and the burgundies like I love this color story and so I definitely wanted to get I had this in a different Z palette but the shadows didn't fit quite right and my Virgo brain just couldn't handle it and these shades fit perfectly in here they look beautiful so this is the color story that I have in my Midnight Garden um, palette from Give Me Glow, and again, really great quality, really nice magnets. Like, the shadows feel very secure in there, and you know me. I like having products that end up falling out of their packaging, but <laughs> definitely I love these two, and they are very, very affordable. This one was $12, and this one was $10, and then, of course, they send you, like, coupon codes whenever you order, so... The next time that I want to get another palette, definitely I have some coupon codes. So I really do like these palettes. They're really high quality and they don't break the bank. The last item that I ended up picking up was one of the Equate creams. And again, this is the Walmart brand. This is the comparable to the CeraVe moisturizing cream. This is the big tub of moisturizer that I use um, for my nighttime. So that's full. But basically what I do is I take a tub of this I take a whole bottle of this, because this is empty, so a whole bottle of this, and then I take my CeraVe cream and I mix them all together, and that is my nighttime cream. That's why it is so thick. Like, you can do the, what, the Dairy Queen, like, blizzard thing on it, and it's not going anywhere, because that CeraVe cream is really, really thick and inclusive in there. So, this is just my nighttime moisturizer. And I think in my empties, I said that it takes me a year to go through this because my husband and I both use this for our nighttime cream. But I actually went through two of those last year, so it takes me about six months. But definitely for the cost of the hyaluronic acid, which is $9, and then this is $10. No, this is 11 It went up to 11 So for $9 plus $11, that's 20 plus some CeraVe cream or some Aquaphor that I mix in there. So let's say for $25, my husband and I both have night cream for six months. So that is how I save money on that side of things. But those were all the things that I'm actually tracking in my purchases, but let me touch on my prescription cream. So like I said, this is Eucrisa. And again, like I'm not a doctor. I, I actually don't know how YouTube feels about people talking about prescription things, but I guess I'll just say, talk to your doctor. If you have questions, if you are wondering if this might work for you, talk to your doctor about it. But the other caveat I will say is maybe talk to your insurance company. Because when my doctor talked to me about this cream, they actually said it's very expensive. Sometimes insurance don't cover it. And not only that, but sometimes the co-pays on this cream is extremely expensive. Now, in my head, I'm thinking extremely expensive, like a drunk elephant product, like, oh, like $80, $90 for a copay. 
Um, so when I actually figured out what the copay was, it wasn't that much of a shock to my system, but I think for copays, it is expensive. But I think in the big scheme of like high-end skincare, this is actually not that expensive if I'm just paying for the copay. Again, this is a prescription medication that is used for eczema. I do have eczema on my fingers and on my fingertips, so I am very, very aware and cautious about how dry my hands get. And also, like, I'm not wearing my ring today because I spent a lot of times with my hands in, like, water and cleaning yesterday, so I'm giving my skin time to breathe. But for KP, which if what was it Ker keratosis pilaris or something like that, but it is the like and I'm kind of flaring a little bit, but it's the redness and it's the bumps on the arm, and this to me is good. This looks good to me. When I showed it to my doctor, he goes, "Wow, that's bad," and I'm like, "You should have seen it three months ago when I was flaring up so bad that it looked like I was attacked by ants." So that's what prompted him to recommend this cream. And this cream has been amazing for my KP. I did, I'm i not being as diligent with putting it on every other night, but when I do, it clears my skin up. So again, that's one of those things. And it, it helps too, if I'm rubbing it on my arms, I'm getting it on my hands. So it's also preventing any eczema from popping up on my fingertips. So again, it's prescription. So talk to your doctor, you know, all that jazz. This was a $50 copay. And to give some maybe comparison, my prescription for the al alizaic acid is only $10. I have TRICARE, so again, like check with your insurances and see if they'll cover it. Um, again, TRICARE did cover it, but they it had like the highest copay that they can charge you, which is that $50. Um, this is a $900 cream. Let that sink in, and for two seconds, I'm going to complain about the American healthcare system. And I think that it has more to do with the insurance system more than the actual, maybe probably the pharmaceutical system has some issues. There's not $900 worth of ingredients in here. There's not $900 worth of research that went into them charging $900 for a tube of cream. But because insurance companies pay pharmaceutical companies and doctor's offices and hospitals, because insurance companies pay them pennies on the dollar, they have to overinflate their prices just to get the amount that this actually is worth. So thankfully I have insurance and so my responsibility was only $50. But if somebody didn't have insurance and this was the only thing that worked for them, their out-of-pocket cost would still be that $900. And that's because they, they overinflate prices because insurance companies don't actually pay what the charges are. That is my two cents about the healthcare industry. And this goes for hospitals. This goes for everything else. You know, if you don't have insurance, talk to your hospitals about what is the what is the cash amount? What is the private pay amount for things? Because you as a private pay person should not have to pay the same amount as what the insurances are being charged because the insurances are charging, are paying pennies on the dollar. That's why they charge $10 for a Band-Aid because they know the insurance companies are only going to reimburse 10 cents for it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole. Maybe some of you have maybe figured out with some stuff, but I do work in healthcare, so I'm kind of passionate about that side of it and the way that billing works. So definitely, again, talk to your doctor, talk to your insurance company. You know, don't necessarily get surprised by whatever the copay is or the cost of this. Some insurance companies are actually denying, you know, supplying this because of how much it costs. But for me, it works so well. And the other side of it is I already got a letter from 
if you if you have Tricare, like Express Scripts is the way that they you can have like stuff mailed to you. They are they're like, oh, do you need your refill of this? I'm like, who is going through this in a month when you have to literally use a pea-sized amount for my entire arm? But maybe that's a little bit of a racket is how much medicine we have sitting around in our houses that we just get refills on and then never use. But I'm not going to get on my high horse about medical waste and <laughs> medical and medicine waste that is out there. So definitely that is something that has been clearing up the skin on my body. Um, I did try using it on my face and it did burn on my face. So my face skin is a little bit more sensitive. So I washed it off immediately, but it works really well on my body. So while this is a $50 product, I'm not keeping it in my inventory. I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts on this and also kind of say that so far that has been the only thing that has helped with my KP. And I'll just leave it at that. Y'all go talk to your own doctors about it. So with looking at my numbers, which I have to zoom out a little bit on my spreadsheet because of all of those jelly pop primers. So if you guys remember from last month, I did include the $30 for the ColourPop order from December. I am taking that out of this month's budget. So between the $30 from the ColourPop and then all my other purchases that counted towards my budget, I spent $163.48 in January. I did have two paychecks, so that was $75 each, and I earned two cents in interest in my little savings account. So I put that in there too, just to make all of my balances even out. So I had a balance in my savings account of $156.31. And so if we take those two and subtract them, I was negative $7.17 in my beauty budget. Now I will say this loud for everybody in the back. I do not actually overdraft my savings account for beauty purchases. I just pay myself back when the next paycheck hits. So I've already gotten paid in the beginning of February, and so I have already reimbursed myself for that $7. I am not going into debt for beauty items, and I am not overdrafting my account for beauty items. So I'll leave it at that, but I've already paid myself back for that. So I was back at a functional zero as of the 2nd of February. So definitely, I think these purchases were worth it. Getting sunscreens that will last me through the summer for essentially $12 was really great. Getting some free gifts, getting tons of my jelly pops. I do not regret this at all. I did need a new cream, so I was totally out, so I needed this. And so none of my purchases I am upset about, so I am very happy with everything that I picked up. So, so far for the year out of my budget, I have spent $125.31 in makeup purchases, $31.88 in skincare, and $70 on makeup tools. If you guys remember from my last video, I did buy more sponges from DSMD Shop. She did a huge restock, and so definitely I restocked on my favorite sponges, and they are also very, very affordable. So my sponges and these two palettes do count towards my beauty tools, so that was for $70. So I feel like I'm in a really good place. I did go ahead and I put my restock items for Black Friday into my budget because I wanted to make sure those items are accounted for so that while I am spending throughout the year, I know that if I need to pump the brakes and kind of slow down a little bit, which I plan to slow down quite a bit and just focus on what I have, but definitely I did need to do some restocks in January and a little bit into February, I had to do some restocks on some things, but definitely my budget is looking really, really good. You guys are gonna have to let me know down below whenever you do all the things, you know, thumbs up this video, subscribe, stick around for more. I have plenty of amazing content coming out this year, but let me know down below, how did you do in January with your purchases? Did you also pick up some of the Jelly Pop primers? Let me know if you guys were able to snag some of those. Tell me what was your favorite purchase in January? I would say apart from 
the Jelly Pop primers, these empty palettes were my favorite purchases because they're just beautiful. They're gorgeous. I cannot wait for what Give Me Glow comes out with for their spring collection. And like I said, I am just, I am wanting to depot all of my shadows, but I'm holding firm trying not to do that. So definitely let me know how you are doing down below. Make sure to stick around for more of my buys and buys. I will make sure to link my playlist down below all of my project pans, everything like that, make sure to stick around for those. My next videos coming up, I have deck of panning on the 20th and then I have my no pan left behind and my project 10 uses coming up on the 25th. So you're gonna want to stick around for those as well, but I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope that you have a beautiful day and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.